Well guys, I've spent more time in my hangar working on the Super Duty in the last two days than I probably have in the last month or two altogether. So I'll show you what I got done so far. If you remember, I did say I wanted to start with the back of the airplane and work my way forward. And that is what I've been doing. I've got my nylon inserts finished up, got the cables run. They're not uh, tensioned yet. I've got these pieces made here and you can see I've polished them just like I polished this. I added kind of a nice swoop to it so it wasn't so blocky. And in the front here, I kind of did the same shape as the leading edge of the horizontal stab just to give it a little flare. So this is all done. I don't have the cotter pin in, yet in here and I don't have the safety wire on here yet, like I said, just because they're not tensioned yet. One of the problems with the rudder cable is that it was rubbing on the elevator autopilot servo, which, let me zoom in here. You might be able to see right there, that's the servo and you can see the, the rudder cable wire right here. And I'll show you a couple pictures. I'll put some pictures on the screen to kind of show you what I did to raise that cable up so that it wasn't hitting or rubbing on the elevator servo. There's no tension on this cable, but you can see how it, if it was lower, it would rub on the, the servo. So I've made these two little brackets that hold the pulley and then, uh, so the cable will ride in the pulley, it raises it up above the servo so it doesn't rub, uh, and it works perfect. I just have to put the cotter pin through there. That cotter pin keeps the cable from ever being able to jump off the pulley. One of the other things I've done, which you probably don't really care about, is that I've completely rearranged the hanger to put the Super Duty over more where the workshop area is. It used to be, right here, sort of where the cruiser is at. I moved the pits over there, the cruiser onto this side, and I have both wings now over here. So they're both together, and I need to, I need to lay up these two fairings here to get this done, because once this is done, I'm gonna scuff up the wings, prime them, and paint them. So I really need to get that done. That's probably going to be next. Mostly what I've been working on is the firewall forward part of the airplane. I got all of the firewall forward packages sent from Zanair up in Canada. It was $6,400 and it was, it was only $6,400 because I had already had the cowl and the engine mount. But that finishes up pretty much everything else I need for the front of the airplane. Here's all of the parts or bags laid out on the table. All of this together was $6,400, but it does let me get this finished up. One of the very first things I wanted to do was get this oil cooler mounted, or the oil cooler mount fit and, and mounted, because I wanted to finish up getting all the hoses that I need from Aircraft Specialty. But this piece does not fit, and the obvious reason it doesn't fit, I think, is because this engine has a different starter on it than what the engine had when, when Zenith designed this. But it goes on like this, and what happens is in the very bottom here, let me zoom that in if I can. Sorry for the wiggle. The very bottom right here is where it's hitting the starter. So hopefully I can just, it looks like I can, I can just kind of grind away a bit of the, the metal down in here and that'll fit on there and I'll be able to get the oil cooler mounted. Since I could not get the oil cooler fit and mounted, I figured I'd start on the baffling these pieces come all pre-cut. They do fit perfectly around the cylinders. The left side here, for some reason, doesn't fit properly up here, which isn't a big deal. I could just trim that off, but I'm not sure why that doesn't really line up. If we look at the passenger side, it fits perfect. There's a back half and a front half. I have uh, these, this, there's, this is actually three pieces. This top piece here and on the bottom, there's two pieces, and this is really kind of hard to figure out because the instructions will just say are very sparse. And both of these pieces back here have an angle built into them, but both of them had completely different angles. 
So I, this piece here, I wasn't sure what angle to mount that. I, it could have went up here like this if I mounted it flush with this one, or if I use this one back here, it's down here like this. But just looking at the, the pictures, I see that this goes down at an angle on this side here. And so that's what I did. I, I just, I used the angle on this one and rebent this one to, to match. But, you know, it is nice that they're pre-made, but there's still a lot of work to do to these. I had to trim this edge here and I still have to trim this a bit. I don't know what that hole is for because nothing goes there, but I do need to trim a little bit more off of that. Now, the real thing, the real problem with the baffles is there's a left and right back baffle here. And I cannot get that baffle in here to get it fit and mounted. I think I might have to take off the engine to mount that baffling. I hope I don't have to do that, but it's not a huge deal if I do. I have all of the hoses, the fuel lines hooked up, but they're just finger tight right now. Uh, this one down here for the fuel pressure, I'm waiting for the fitting that goes in there. Uh, the oil hoses, they are final installed though. Uh, but what I would do is if I do have to remove the engine, I will just remove these bolts here and remove that remote oil unit there. That would be the easiest way to, to take the engine off. And then I don't have the cotter pins in here yet. And I was talking to an A&P and he was telling me that, he says virtually nobody uses cotter pins in here anymore. They just use the regular uh, locking uh, nuts, not the nylon ones, but the all steel nuts. So that's probably what I'm gonna do is just use those nuts instead of trying to put a cotter pin. This one wouldn't be too bad, but I don't know how in the world I'd fit a cotter pin up in here. <laughs> so if I can get those other nuts and that's what, that's what everybody's doing, that's what I'll do. This right here is the air box that goes on the bottom of the carburetor. And then this, uh, all this gets built up on here. It's all built, all these holes, there's no holes in here. You have to drill all the holes, but everything is done on here. All these parts are just ready for paint. This is steel and this thing weighs about a hundred pounds, but I'm gonna get that one powder coated since it's steel. And I think these ones here I'll prime and paint. Now I have another issue with this that I have no idea how to solve, but this piece goes on here just like that. And there's four holes in the bottom of the, the carburetor here. Well, how do you put a bolt in here? These are threaded here. So the bolt has to go up that way and attach here. This bolt has to go up here. So I don't know if I get a little tiny bolt like this and slide it in here and then up, or maybe they make a stud that comes down out of here. Then I can put this on and just put on a, a nut with a, a locking washer. I have no idea how to mount this and there is zero instructions that come with this. So, um, I mean, I know it goes this way, but I'm just showing you if you can see it better like that. Uh, so anyway, nothing's ever easy. I can't just get this powder coated and rivet it together and bolt it on because I have no idea how to attach this thing. I have my workbench mostly cleared off because I have two boxes I want to open up and we'll take a look at it together. These are the two big boxes sitting on my garage floor. I know what's in there. Do you guys know what's in there? Let's see if I can give you a hint. We shall open this one first. I'm gonna need somebody to come over and pick all this stuff up off the floor. So here's my new, my new hat. And here's, that's just garbage. All right, I think all that's garbage. This is the back plate. Nope, I lied, that's the back plate. Oh, this looks like it's a, a mid one maybe, I don't know. 
kind of halfway in like that. And I guess I'm just magically supposed to be able to drill the holes for that and do that correctly. Anymore, I just hate when things aren't pre-drilled. <laughs> but it looks like uh, this back plate, you can see that that is all pre-drilled. It's got nut plates on it. And it's really nice too. It's all carbon fiber. It's very, very light. And I also really like, obviously, that the, the spinner is cut out too. So that'll go in there. All right, guys, this is the prop. And I'll tell you, man, one of the things I'm really getting worried about is how much weight is on the nose of this airplane. Like I said, that steel plate that goes on the bottom of the carburetor, I mean, this thing's probably five pounds, which doesn't sound real heavy, but there's just so much weight with this engine installed. Now this propeller, I ordered a black propeller with yellow tips, because that would be probably the best looking for this airplane being it's kind of military. So I'm hoping they sent me the right one. I'm sure they did. I shouldn't even unpack any of this stuff yet because it's gonna sit around for a year until I need it, but I just wanna make sure everything is not damaged and correct because now would be the time to let them know if it's not correct. All right, boy, this is, this is big. I think it's, uh, I still can't remember, it's either 84, 84 inches or 82, maybe it says on here. Yeah, it might say somewhere in there, but wow, look at that. Boy, is that nice. That's a work of art. <laughs> and this is their Stoll propeller. And up front here, it has a pin, and that's how you, you set your pitch. I'm not exactly sure how that works, if there's different, different slots it goes into or whatnot, but well, that is really nice. The back of the propeller is a flat black. And the front is nice and glossy, and obviously it has the yellow tip. Boy, does that look nice. That really is nice. So I'm just going to open up the other one just to make sure it's the same. And uh, that's the prop. So this propeller, uh, with shipping, I want to say was $4,600. And there's, that's not a receipt, so spend a lot of money in the last month. Better get my butt back to work. Start paying for this stuff. Anyway, cool, that's the propeller. One other thing that's in here is going to be the hub, which is really heavy. And it looks like there's a, a box of bolts and stuff like that. But in fact, I don't think I'm, I'm even going to take this out of the bag. I'll just leave it in the bag. But that's the hub right there. If I could just guess, it's at least 10 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Now, guys, before I get back to work, there's one other thing I wanted to show you on my Super Duty. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this is a... World War II airplane that's being used to scout and survey the battlefield, perhaps locate enemy troops for the fighters. And to do that, we need some armament on this airplane. Now, I may or may not have installed hard points in my wings and that tube right there may or may not be turned into a Sidewinder missile. And if I'm going to have missiles on the airplane, I need a way to launch them. So I have installed a master arm panel right up here. And hopefully we can get a good look at that. On the left is the master arm. 
then we can select between bombs and missiles. And then we press the red button to fire. Now I had aircraft specialty silk screen this panel. I made the panel and then painted it black and I sent it off to aircraft specialty for their very, very nice and professional silk screening. So if I want to fire a missile, my fake missile, I can turn the master arm on. Then I can select between bombs and missiles on the wing, or if I want to drop the external tank on the bottom of the airplane, which I will have, it'll be a cargo pod. But let's say I want to launch a missile, and then that one right there fires the missile, baby. Well, I'm obviously having a lot of fun with this airplane. The Zenith airplanes are fun to build. It's the perfect airplane. I really can't wait for this thing to be done. Although I will admit, there's so much with this firewall forward that I don't know how to do. Sometimes I just sit here and look at this thing and, and wonder if I'll ever be able to finish it. But hopefully I'll, uh, I'll be able to figure out all that stuff uh, on the firewall forward and get that done. I think tomorrow I'm going to lay up the fairings on the wings. If you guys saw the video a couple videos ago where we, we used a $90,000 scanner to scan a bunch of fairings, some of you were asking when those fairings are going to be available, and I do not know. It does take quite a while to take those files that we scanned and then create the tooling to make the parts. Uh, Mark Siever at North American Aerospace is working on those, but I don't have a time frame of when they will be available. I'm really hounding him because I really would like the wing tips for my wings, but if they're not gonna be available for a while, I think what I'm going to do is just paint the wings without the wing tips, install the wings on the airplane, and then later on when we get the wing tips, I can, can put them in and, and rivet them in, into the wings. So that's it for now, guys. I am going to get back to work and get as much done as I can while I'm off of work.